My dearly beloved in Christ, today's liturgy is unique in several ways. First of all, we have this very lengthy epistle of St. Paul and the gospel of the sower, sowing seed in the field, but the collect of the mass, and I have spoken before about the collect or the primary oration, which gives a theme for the Sunday. But today's collect is the only one of the entire year on Sundays that mentions a saint, not by name, but it references St. Paul. O God, who seest that we put not our trust in anything that we do, mercifully grant that by the protection of the doctor of the Gentiles, we may be defended against all adversity through Christ our Lord. So of course, the doctor of the Gentiles is St. Paul. Doctor means teacher, the teacher of the Gentiles. St. Paul was the last of the apostles called. We have the 12 apostles, and then St. Paul would be the 13th apostle. He is called an apostle, given that title because of his spreading the faith. But as you recall, and we celebrated about 10 days or so ago, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, he was originally a persecutor of the Christians and then was converted in a miraculous way. St. Paul, who was a Pharisee who had studied the law, knew the scripture very well, believed that our Lord was perhaps an imposter, that he was not the Messiah for sure, and so he approved of the persecution of the Christians. And when St. Stephen, one of the first seven deacons, was martyred, it says in the book, The Acts of the Apostles, that those who stoned him to death laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Now, laying their garments at his feet, he was, you might say, collecting their cloaks and keeping them while they stoned Stephen, indicates an approval of what they did. And so he also was responsible for the stoning to death of the holy martyr Stephen. But as Saint Stephen was expiring, he fell on his knees and he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. So he prayed for his persecutors, for their conversion. And what a powerful prayer, because it merited the grace of conversion for Saint Paul, who at the time was called Saul. So Saul was so taken up with what he believed was a righteous cause to persecute the Christians, that he would round up the Christians and deliver them over to the high priest. And so one day he went to the high priest and obtained an authorization to go to Damascus and gather up any Christians in that city to lead them prisoners to the priests. But as he was approaching Damascus, all of the sudden, he was surrounded by a bright light and struck off his horse. And he was struck blind. And he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you? And our Lord answered, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And so right away he understood, understood that Jesus was the Messiah and that he was persecuting him by persecuting the Christians. Now those who accompanied him heard the voice but didn't see anything. And St. Paul, Saul, had been struck blind. So they led him by the, by the hands, they led him into the city. And he went into a home and it says that he prayed continuously and he fasted for three days and three nights, and had nothing to eat or drink. And after those three days, God spoke to a Christian, an elder in the Christian community named Ananias. And he said, Ananias, go to such and such a house, and there is a man there named Saul. I want you to baptize him. And Ananias was shocked, and he said, Lord, I've heard about this man. He persecutes those who follow you. And our Lord replied, don't worry, he's praying. 
And he's going to me, he's going to be for me a vessel of election to the Gentiles. And so Ananias went there, laid his hands on Saul, who immediately recovered his sight, and then he baptized him. And right away, Saul went into the synagogue and began preaching that Jesus is the Messiah. And the Jews are wondering, well, isn't this the same man that was coming to arrest us? And now he's preaching that Jesus is the, the Redeemer? And, of course, St. Paul went on to preach continuously to the Jews and Gentiles to preach the name of Jesus. Now, St. Paul is sometimes called the greatest of the apostles, perhaps for several reasons. Number one, he wrote more books in the New Testament than any other apostle, by far. St. Paul wrote 14 epistles. St. John wrote three. St. Peter, two. St. James and Jude, one each. Short epistles. St. Paul's epistles are lengthy. They are full of doctrine. And he also traveled extensively. But not only did he travel what are often referred to as the three great missionary journeys of St. Paul, which are recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, but not only that, but he suffered tremendously for the faith. And that's what we read about in today's epistle, taken from his epistle to Corinthians, how he was scourged so many times. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned. He had to suffer want and cold and hunger and nakedness. And he had all of these things to suffer. But he did it willingly for the spread of the gospel, for the salvation of souls, because he loved God and he loved souls, the souls for whom our Lord bled and died. St. Paul was an extraordinary man. As I mentioned, he had been well-educated as a Pharisee and knew the scriptures thoroughly. He also was a tent maker by trade. And it's interesting, we read that he, he did not want to be a burden to anyone. So when he would settle down in a city for a period of time, he would employ himself in his trade of tent making. He also could speak at great length. There's one occasion that's somewhat humorous in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, in a city called Troas where he was staying there, and he was about to leave pretty soon, and the Christians knew he was going to leave, and they, they wanted to hear every word that would come from his lips, so he continued to preach all the way until midnight. I don't know when he started, but we're talking about a long sermon. And it says here, he prolonged his address until midnight. Now there were many lamps in the upper room where we had assembled, and a young man named Eutychus, who was sitting at the window, was overcome with drowsiness. And as St. Paul addressed them at great length, he went fast asleep and fell down from the third story to the ground and was picked up dead. Paul went down to him and laid himself upon him and embracing him said, Do not be alarmed, life is still in him. Then he went up and broke bread and ate, and having spoken to them a good while, even until daybreak, he departed, uh, and they took away the boy alive and were not a little comforted. So this interesting story where he brought to life this boy who fell down from the window, but also how St. Paul had um, preached so long, basically all night long. And this was, this was very common for him where he would speak at great length and day after day after day preaching the faith, striving to convert people. But another thing we read in the Acts of the Apostles is that St. Paul was continuously dogged by the Jews who did not convert. They were constantly stirring up persecution against him. And on one occasion it mentions that he finally had had it with the Jewish people because of their hardness of heart and all the trouble they stirred up. And so he directed his steps and his attention to the Gentiles. This is taken from chapter 18. He was in Corinth. And there he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. 
because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul visited them, and as he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and he set to work, for they were tent makers by trade. And he would preach in the synagogue every Sabbath, bringing in the name of the Lord Jesus, and, uh, and tried to convince Jews and Greeks. But when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul was wholly occupied with the word, emphatically assuring that Jesus, the Jew, and assuring the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But as they contradicted him and blasphemed, he shook his garments in protest and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am innocent of it. Henceforth, I will go to the Gentiles. So from spending the primary amount of his time in synagogues trying to convert the Jews, he now directed his attention to the Gentiles. And so he is referred to as the apostle of the Gentiles, the teacher of the Gentiles. In today's gospel, uh, I'm sorry, epistle again, we read how many things he endured and suffered for the spread of the faith. But you notice after he recounts all of these things, he mentions that he was given a revelation. He was wrapped up to, as he says, the third heaven. And he was allowed to hear things and to see things that could not be repeated. But notice when he states that, he doesn't say, I did this or this happened to me. He said, I know a man who so many years ago was wrapped up to the third heaven. So he is not referring to himself, not saying that he experienced this out of his humility. But finally, after he recounts this, then he goes on to say, after all this, there was given him a thorn for the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. And concerning this, I thrice besought the Lord that it might leave me. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee for strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, God permitted St. Paul, here's this great apostle, the greatest of the apostles, who traveled and preached and suffered so much for the love of God. Still, he was tempted. So who are we to think, if a great apostle is tempted, that we should be able to escape temptation? And notice this, that when he had this thorn in his side, as he says, which all commentators agree was temptation, probably temptation of the flesh, that he prayed three times that it would be taken away, and basically our Lord said, no, I'm not going to take it away, but I'm going to give you the grace to conquer it, to overcome it. And it is by overcoming temptation that we earn our place in heaven, that we show our love of God and our loyalty to our Lord. So temptation is part of life, and we see that even in the great St. Paul. So let us invoke him today to help us to be strong in our faith and to be willing to endure, as he did, suffering for the love of God and for our faith, that we might persevere and earn the crown that awaits us in heaven. The great St. Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, a good example for us to be fervent in living and spreading our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.